The next question being asked is, in an acute case, should one dose by following the temperature, pulse, or respiratory rate of the patient? Or should pulsology be chosen by all the patient feels, or both to a degree? Also, what temperature level is considered dangerous, requiring supplemental mean to control it? So let's start with the first part, which is uh, what should be you watch? You watch the symptom, any symptom, sign and symptom. So any uh, symptom that will tell you the progress of the patient, progress towards better or progress towards less well. So if uh, the temperature goes up, that means the patient is not doing as well, or the disease is on the ascendancy. Uh, if the pulse goes up, sometimes it's more sensitive than the temperature. Uh, the respiratory rate a bit less sensitive though, but probably the pulse is the most sensitive. But it, it, you have to take pay attention to all the symptoms to know uh, when the patient is if the patient is doing better or, or less well. So temperature is very reliable unless. Uh, the patient went into a warm environment or they took a, a warm drink or they're sitting under a radiator. But assuming that uh, you, in the control situation, the temperature is a very good um, uh, um, way to, to, to evaluate the, the progress of the patient one way or the other. The pulse, more sensitive. Uh, respiratory rate, a bit less sensitive, but it's still useful. And especially if there's a respiratory disease. However, uh, energy of the patient, the moods, um, y y um, the behavior, they all can be useful. But a, when there's a febrile disease, uh, pulse is probably the most accurate. So when the pulse goes up, uh, that means the patient is not doing as well. So therefore, you can increase your pulseology. The next part of the question is also what temperature, what, uh, at what temperature level is considered dangerous, requiring supplemental means to control Temperature is not dangerous. Fever is not dangerous. It's well proven scientifically. What you have to be concerned is not the temperature, but is the cause of the fever. So especially when there's congestion to the head, let's say there's uh, um, very intense fever, 104, 105 degrees, even perhaps higher. This temperature sometimes recorded at 106, 107. It's not dangerous. The, fever, the temperature itself is not dangerous. The human being can tolerate 112 degrees easily when people do a thermotherapy for people with cancer, they raise the temperature to 112. People that have had insulation, uh, the temperature have been measured to um, um, 115, 117, if I recall. So the temperature is not the problem, is the cause of the temperature, the fever itself. So the higher is the, 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 the fever, to some degree, the more um, the, the, there's an invasive organism there that is, uh, is, can uh, um, endanger the, the life of the individual. So you, you watch uh, the, 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 the temperature, but you don't try to decrease the temperature because the fever is the defense of the body. Uh, so this is a very well-known fact scientifically. So the, the fever is beneficial and it's the way the body defends itself. So however, the higher is the fever, the more you want to make sure that uh, you're um, hydrating the patient, the patient is well hydrated, and also you want to make sure that there's no congestion of the head because then the, sometimes there could be a vicious cycle that develop. The more there's congestion of the head, the, um, the less... Um, aware is the patient of what's going on and the less aware because of the congestion uh, it, it, it uh, increased the, the, um, the congestion and then um, and, and uh, the fever goes up and so on. So here you uh, a compress to the head is very good to, uh, to limit the congestion to the head. Hydrotherapy is excellent in acute condition to, uh, to, inc to move the, the blood around. So the, the, a great principle of hydrotherapy, and that's the last paragraph of the Argonon, a great principle of hydrotherapy is the, the, uh, the the uh, physiological healings, so let's say wounds, infection, and then, uh, if there's an infection, physio physiological healing is directly proportional to the amount of blood flow. So more the blood flow in an area, the more new blood comes in, new white blood cell comes in, the more uh, oxygen nourishment comes in to feed the cell, and what comes out is the toxic material uh, is excreted, 
the the inflammation goes down the congestion the inflammation goes down and the healing is increased Re, uh, regeneration of tissue will be increased by increasing the circulation to an area so during fever you want to you want the blood to circulate and our therapy is an excellent method to uh, combine with homeopathy to uh, deal with the most serious uh, acute con condition so the idea with other therapy is not to decrease the temperature is to uh, um, limit the congestion especially to the brain and increase the circulation all over the per uh, person's um, um, uh, organism and that is will be beneficial